Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder 2, believe it or not, an actual tank review, and today we will have a look at the M6A2E1, the new American 6.7 Premium Battle Pass Season 3 Top Reward. Is it worth it? What can it do? How does it stack up to its competition? You will all see later on, not just in the gameplay, where I have some really cherry-picked highlights for you, but also in the statistical uh, comparison. And then I just let my uh, thoughts flow freely over you. I try to narrow it down a little bit and to make it a bit more quicker than the usual 30 minutes or 25 minutes. Let's see if we can do this. Now, at first, I really didn't like this tank from the looks of it. I thought to myself, what the hell is this thing and how can it actually stack up to the heat of S meta that is around there? And also, why the American tanks? I mean, look at them. Look at the poor Americans at 6.7. They have like everything and more. And so you can build multiple lineups that would really be competitive. But that's besides the point. So the thing is, this tank is not 100% finished in every single aspect, typical Gaijin, but I had a surprising amount of good battles in a row, largely thanks to German teams, but that's again besides the point. This tank can do the job, and when it comes to heavy tanks, it's kind of fairly in the middle of the pack, as we'll see. It's a bit difficult, though, to pick out heavy tanks of other nations throughout 6.7s. Yes, there is the Tiger 2, to which I will compare it, obviously. But then I just went a bit wild and also picked some medium tanks just to put things into perspective so that you, which do not have access to this tank yet, can put things into perspective. There is a way, actually, to preview this uh, if you just click here and then click here. Um, but I think that if we then, you know, use here my, I would say, experience, we can hopefully come to an even better result. So without further ado, let's start right away and let's begin as usual with the armor. So at first we have here a front plate that is 50 millimeters, but that is on top of another plate that is roughly 100 millimeters thick and is curved slightly differently. And so you have here various different thicknesses, including the lower glazes, and that is further reinforced by the fact that it is spaced, you know. So the funny thing is here on the upper half, Normal shells, let's say the long 88 or the 128 millimeter from the Germans or the normal solid shot from the British 20 pounder could get through here, but have huge difficulties getting through here. And sometimes that even absorbs heat FS in a very weird way. Now that has to do with the backplating being not really completely flat, but being also a bit uh, bent and having some things in it that um, you know can really screw with the penetration values of certain shells so it is not impenetrable it is not as homogeneous as the front plate of a tiger 2 but it comes to roughly the same protection values i'd say then we also have here those um, i don't know wedges and as you can see they are somewhere between yeah 70 millimeters depending on how you look at it and even from the front when they are angled at max you have 84 millimeters however if you look around the corner and you can hide this plate this one becomes incredibly hard to penetrate and even if it gets penned uh, by anything other than APHE it does little to no effect uh, from the side it is easy to penetrate here with uh, somewhere between 55 and 60 millimeters on this edge and then we have here the well one inch plate or 25.4 on top of the well 60 millimeter or 50 millimeter plating and there are various different gaps so at times even SPA can easily punch through then we come to the turret and I kind of remember that the turret seemed to have been tougher um like before the patch dropped and so we have here 
less than 200 millimeters of protection and uh, it shows us the armor dimensions at the point however it is also curved and i'm not quite sure how reliable here those uh, stats readings are but then we also have here the turret ring area which is fairly easy to penetrate even for a panther and then also here this forehead if you will with uh, roughly 80 85 millimeters um, those cheeks are incredibly well angled and you can pen them with heat fs sometimes apds but normal APHE rounds, AP, CBC, whatever, will not go through. And even from the side, you can see this tank is huge and tall. And it's roughly, well, depending on where you look at, over 60 millimeters, um, 70 millimeters, 90 millimeters. But it's rather big and flat. And for this battle rating, it will not cause too much trouble. From the top, the engine deck is 1 inch or 25.4 millimeters and the roof is then a bit thicker of the turret with roughly 30 millimeters so it has trolley um, at times really tough armor now let's look into the interior and we can see this tank has five crew member two are in the front a radio operator and a driver and then we can see that this is like a heightened t32 turret i'd say so there is ammunition on the side near the gun breech and also the propellant charges 12 rounds for the first uh, ammo rack or first stage ammo stowage as it is called here is in the back of the turret that means if you survive um, a turret penetration by an APHE and you don't blow up you still kind of can keep on fighting then going to a cap and recall the third crew member and have almost near full combat capabilities again so then there is also if you take out a lot of the ammunition a lot of empty space where you can shoot through with solid shot with heat fs without the tank blowing up but yeah it, the turret area it's a bit difficult to not hit ammunition or a crew and um, that is the armor and the x-ray it is at times surprisingly tough at range it's really trolley and even in close quarters if the enemy doesn't really have too much time to aim carefully then you can surprise them and bounce them but only with what i call normal regular conventional guns you know that fire apcbc rounds aps and heat fs will go through the steel plating with no troubles let's have a look at some other statistics Let's start with the mobility and well we start with 800 horsepower for a 69.8 ton tank and that gives it an 11.5 horsepower to ton ratio which is more than the Tiger 2 H SLA 16 and the IS-3 but compared to the Carnarvon and other medium tanks this is far from ideal. Also the top speed is quite the lowest in this comparison and is limited to only 29 kilometers per hour. The reverse, on the other hand, is best in class with a whopping minus 29 km per hour and that is outmost excellent and might surprise enemies that kind of try to flank it in close quarters when suddenly this thing goes in reverse much faster than you would anticipate from such a big lumbering beast that was just kind of slowly um, trundling forwards. And it also has neutral steering, although that's not really too big of an impact. Now, finally, let's talk about the business end of the M6A2E1, and that is the 105mm T5E1 cannon. The same that you can find on the T28 premium heavy tank destroyer or the tech tree variant, the T95. And this is the predecessor to the T29's T5E2 cannon. Overall shell capacity is 60 rounds and you can take out half or even two thirds of that and still have plenty for any given battle. The reload is hefty with 15.4 seconds. Just to compare this, uh, the majority of other tanks, including the German Tiger II series with the long 88, have less than half the reload and so they can shoot you two times for every shot that you send at 
range at target and the T5E2 cannon on the said T29 premium heavy tank for the Americans has almost 3 seconds less reload as well. Only the Soviet IS-3 and IS-2 tanks have here longer reloads, quite significantly so. The turret rotation on the other hand is kind of okay-ish with 18 degrees per second. Again, the Soviets have here half the turret rotation speed but, you know, the more modern vehicles get, or overall the faster, the better also gets their gun handling. Gun depression, on the other hand, is best in class. The gun elevation with 15 degrees is then not so great. Elevation speed with 4 degrees per second is kind of World War II standard-ish. So far, nothing really too bad. Now let's talk about the ammunition that this tank fires. Due to all shell types being unlocked courtesy of this tank having premium status, I go through the shells in no particular order. We start with the T32 APCBC round, which has no TNT filler, so it is a solid shot. It has 914 meters per second mass velocity, 256 millimeters of penetration, and at 60 degrees angles of attack, 88 millimeters of penetration. That is quote unquote the same level of penetration that you get from the T13 APCBC round that has a TNT filler. Mass velocity goes down to 899 meters per second and you have 177 grams of TNT equivalent bursting charge which is almost as good as the Soviet's 122 millimeter shell and you really feel the satisfaction when you just blast an enemy tank apart if you go anywhere near the crew compartment or ammunition with this shell type. Again, 253 millimeters of penetration and at 60 degrees angles of attack only one millimeter less, 87 instead of 88. The third shell type that we have is the T30 E1 HE shell with 943 meters per second mass velocity which is rather high for a HG shell. It only creates 20 millimeters of penetration due to the 1.55 kilograms of TNT equivalent bursting charge. That is not really a shell that you should take into battle that often. First of all, you have a top mounted 50 cal that destroys all the lightly protected targets anyway. Second of all, the reload is too long, except if you really like to snipe, then it's right at the edge of being useful. The last, and in this case also least, shell type is the T29E3 APCR. APCR is really unreliable, notoriously awful versus sloped armor, the post penetration damage effect is really bad and that is also not helped by the rather long reload where then people can recover their driver and or gunner and then just either return fire or can ba get back into cover before you can finish them off. The mass velocity with 1128 meters per second isn't that unusual for APCR, look at the target 2s in comparison and yes while here the Carnarvon has less penetration it is marked green because it has APDS which is much much more reliable and also um, significantly better versus sloped armor. 292 millimeters of flat armor penetration was in my case not even enough to go through the upper casement of a Jagdtiger and so there are certain armor targets that you rather should stay away from. So after under 14 minutes the objective part of the review is done. What is now the verdict on this rank 4 battle rating 6.7? US premium heavy tank. Well, despite what I initially thought about it, it could back in quite a lot of good battles and that was really satisfying at times. Although I think this has many to do with at the moment there not being the opposition that this tank might have in the future and also the tanks that I fought. Sometimes the players were obviously confused with what they had in front of them. They had no idea where to shoot, they panicked a little bit, they allowed me to then get the shot in first and this will definitely change once this tank gets available to the broader audience. So I think that as a, a premium tank it does the job when it comes to the modifiers although my civil line income was reduced because this being a test drive and then the times two modifier uh, for the civil lines is not available so at best you're looking at two-thirds of the income that you have with 
equal results with the premium account that is. So the M6A2E1, I would give it a rating of somewhere between 20 to 30, maybe 35 Gaijin coins in the long run, although the marketplace is a wild rodeo. And if you have uh, to look at offers of buying offers that are higher than this, then you might want to look into purchasing another, maybe even better premium tank. Think about the T29. Yes, it has a higher battle rating, but therefore it is faster, equally tanky at times, and also has three seconds shorter reload with more or less the same gun when it comes to the ammunition. So I like the tank, I think it's a decent tank, it's not overpowered, it is not really awful. So this is probably what a battle pass reward should be. Not as bad as the T10A, but also obviously not as glorious as the Centurion Mark V 1. And that is all that I have to say. So I hope you enjoyed the gameplay, I hope you enjoyed the presentation, the review. Let me know in the comment section if you are really liking this format of tank reviews back in the days and make this more often and as usual thanks for watching thanks for listening again i hope you enjoyed this video why not give it a like for you it's just a click for me it means the world and also subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see more we'll see each other on the waves in the skies and on the battlefields of war thunder